But I was going to ask, but you all got Parker and Victoria for their wedding gift. We have to get them a gift? Duh. If you don't get them a wedding gift, you won't be invited on the honeymoon. You go on people's honeymoons? Yeah. It's super weird. <laughs> Whoa, 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 You don't, you don't go to nobody's honeymoon. Ah, that's the time when they get a little freaky, a little, ah, oh, nah, ew, nah, ew, 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 ew. <laughs> After nine years, the Disney Channel original series Bunked has finally come to an end. Bunked was kind of like Disney Channel's like Grey's Anatomy or ER or something where like the cast would just dramatically change for no reason. But after 161 episodes and 400 cast changes, the longest running d of all time has finally ended. And I haven't done a Disney Channel show in a while, so I figured it was about time, you know? However, before I talk about Bunked, we have to go all the way back to 2015 and talk about Jesse. <laughs> Some years ago, I made a video about the beginning of the show, and now here we are again. So, the final episode of Jesse starts off with the usual hilarious antics. I'm going back to sleep. You haven't even done the dishes. Hey, before we start on the video, we gotta give a, a small tribute on camera boys. I sit down me, close your eye, put your hand together, and pray for camera boys. If, and then y'all did watch Jesse Bertram really like, like he didn't hate the kid he just hate what he had to do for them now, in case you forgot or didn't know in the first place, Jesse is about this girl from a military base in Texas who rebels against her dad and moves to New York City yeah. hoping to be like an actor or something. And then with no other options, she becomes a nanny for these two big movie producers and their four kids. It's like I'm going out for breakfast. Who's with me? I thought you had an early audition. Oh, that was yesterday. For the role of a pathetic, struggling actress who can't catch a break. That sounds soups perfect for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> you would think, but the director said I was too real and it made too him sad? too sad. You know, this reminds me of those like movies and TV shows or whatever where it's like, Oh, hey guys, I'm just a relatably down on her yeah, luck, frumpy, okay. dumpy girl. Sure hope my dreams my, magically my come true one day. But then it's like Scarlett okay. Johansson or Anna my life or something, true? you know, and it's like, okay. wow, she's Maybe? just like me. Uh -huh. So the mom comes home from work because the dad and Jesse just like completely disappears for no reason. He's literally in four episodes of season one and then he never shows up ever again. Some say he's still standing in line for cigarettes at 7 Yeah, that is true. Night. Anyway, so we find the mom. It's like, when you watch Jesse, the pain half time don't really be there. You see the mom one, then you see a dad and mom and Robbie birthday. Then you see him sometime around Christmas episode, but that be like they like sometimes uh they be in the episode, and other time they don't. That the mom is producing this movie based on a book that the kids are like obsessed with. How did you get the new Tournament of Scepters book? It's an advanced copy. Your dad and I are producing a movie of the first book. Wait, you are producing Tournament of Scepters? Have you met the novelist, Mr. Robert R.J. Roberts? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh boy, I can't wait for these yeah. kids to I can't, I can't wait until y'all start their making their a book or a movie and, and we start sure. watching oh, please it. Please read literally any other book, I am begging you. Now Luke over here, you see, like he's way too cool for all this fantasy book nonsense, you know what I mean? Are you guys geeking out about that nerd fest of Scepter's garbage again? It involves raiding, therefore you would not understand. I understand that every fan of those books is gonna die alone. 
and get eaten by their cats. You know, people always say stuff like this, like some kind of gotcha insult thing, you know, where it's like, oh, your life yeah. is going to be all alone with your video people, games people and your be books and that. your cats. Like, you're going to wake up one day and be like, ah, shucks, I spent my whole life doing stuff I enjoy. Whoops. But of course, turns out Luke actually totally loves these books, okay? He's just been pretending this whole time. Can't believe Sylvan Skyslayer was eaten by the Wolf King of Cavernia. What? Sylvan Skyslayer is dead? Then who's gonna take his seat at the fire council? You read me, the books. Let me see. You wait, wait, you playing? Were you playing the? Let me see. Were you playing the cool, uh, cool guy role, right? Don't let anybody know that you actually you like what they like. Don't let no nerd know you like what they like. The only time you can actually let a nerd know what you like is if you like one of them, right? If you don't really like them. Don't let them know what you like. Judge us for being fans when you were secretly a fan yourself. I don't want people to think about me. Alright, right, that's, that's a cool. That's cool, Mr. Like this might have some kind of allegory to real life in some way. I can't quite put my finger on it. But how do you tie sure. it now, into bunk? All going on, the mom is starting to realize that all these years with Jesse have gone by and Jesse knows her kids way better than she does and her kids like Jesse way more than they like her. So my plan is to make each ball a planet in the solar system. One word, lasers. And we'll get people to play the planets and we'll set them up all over. Mom, mom, mom. I don't want you to pay people to be in my project. Oh, honey, we don't pay them. They're interns. She just want, want, want a normal situation. She just want you to help her. About the kids and the Not just the pay. Just kind of lays it all out there. I promised Suri that I'd be back to help her with that. It wouldn't be the first time you promised the kids oh. you'd be there and then you weren't. Okay, look, I know that I work a lot, but I want the kids to have everything they want. I think the thing yeah. they want most of all is their mother. And so the mom pulls a few mm -hmm. strings and gets Jesse a role in the new movie she talked about earlier. So that Jesse will be too busy in Hollywood to take so you took away Jesse, so then the kid then the kids can have more time with you. That cold crew and what the devil would teach you. The kids, thus forcing them to hang out with their mom, which is yeah, that, 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 just that's pretty, out there like that. Guess what? That's just pretty sad and apart desperate. In the Tournament of Scepters movie. Sad and desperate what? to be what? doing something How like that. How did you manage that? I just showed the director your acting Hell no. reel. Oh, and he loved no, it. No, not one bit. <laughs> producer so i insisted and so jesse gets whisked away to hollywood to be in this movie where mm -hmm. she meets the author of the book who is a very normal individual how do you pronounce these three pages can't believe you don't speak the language of the bat warriors have you even read the pronunciation index in book one uh actually since this job came up so fast i haven't read any of the books mm. <laughs> You know, probably the most unbelievable part of this show is that the author of the books yeah. would be in charge of the movie. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, he's here directing everything as if there wouldn't be, like, four other producers in his ear the whole time being like, Uh, hey, so uh, we need to give the villain more of a tragic backstory so all the evil stuff he does doesn't seem too evil, you know, or else the kids on Twitter are gonna think we're glorifying it for some reason. So, long story short, the other kids can't stand being around their mom so much. <laughs> Parents, am I right? Okay, I definitely need Jesse. Mom is leaving on business, and I know she means well, but I also know she won't be back in time. Meanwhile, that lucky Jesse gets to be on the set of Tournament of Scepters. I know, I'm Soup's Jelly. Soup Jelly? Soup's Jelly? Okay, Disney Channel, fine, go ahead. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? And so somehow they just go to they, Hollywood. They do. Like, they do. The they escape. Go they, there. They go and run like, away what, to minutes? Hollywood. I feel like the show's kind of glossed over a few details here. That was a challenging hike. Awesome. <laughs> I can't believe we're about to witness the Battle of Fang Mountain. <laughs> Um, uh, Luke, may I borrow your field glasses for a moment? <laughs> oh, yeah, also, the movie's being filmed right below the Hollywood side. <laughs> the, the kids just fly to Hollywood in, like, a Concorde jet, apparently. They evade the cops and the guard dogs and climb up the razor wire to watch the movie being filmed. <laughs> All the kids in, like, Kentucky watch this episode are like, wow, I didn't know L.A. was 300 square feet. Anyway, so the kids start to fall off the H of the Hollywood sign. Jesse hears them screaming because, again, L.A. is such a tiny, small, tiny yeah, little like, town, you know? And then L.A. The is a small, up. tight <laughs> situation. And it's not that hard to hear when something's going wrong. Those are my kids. I have to help them. Jesse, where are my children? So they are here. Oh, wow. Holy 
Hollywood, they're on the H. And they're about to fall. Oh, just want to remind you all that New York to LA nonstop is a six-hour flight, by the way. Oh man, my kids are missing. Quick, let me just scoot across the country real quick and see what's going on. But so Jesse heroically saves the day with a prop crossbow, and the kids are all fine. The author guy is so impressed with Jesse that he hires her to star in a new TV show he's producing, unrelated to the books that he wrote that he's making a movie about, because apparently they're just yeah. letting anyone do anything these days. Like McGee, who's still making movies somehow. Miss Prescott, that was breathtaking. Huh? You are exactly what I'm looking for. Maternal, yet fierce. An Earth Mother who can also kick butt. I'm about to shoot a new TV show out here about a nanny by day superhero by night. And so the very end of the show, the mom realizes that she's missing out on all these years of her kids' lives, and since Jesse's gonna be gone for good, but the creep you know, about the that gonna get picked him? up and renewed for Where's the dad? That's what I wanna know. How y'all put the dad in all the other episodes, but when it comes to it, and of Jesse, when Jesse finally get what he always came for, the dad nowhere to be found. Three seasons, obviously. She decides to retool her job and work-life balance and stuff so she can finally spend some real time with her own kids. You know what? Now that all my kids are like 15 or so, I think it's about time I start being a mom. And that's how Jesse ends. Now, in the same year, 2015, Disney Channel also debuted a brand new show called Bunked. <laughs> This show originally was a spin-off slash sequel to Jesse, in that it's about the kids from Jesse going to summer camp. Oh, excuse me, sir. Can you have these delivered to my room? Jeez, you don't shave your legs for one month and suddenly you're a sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, if you only knew how things were gonna be in 2024. Thank goodness you don't have slightly wide shoulders or a visible jawline or you would never hear the end of it. But like I said, the kids are here for summer camp, which is kind of hilarious because the ending of Jesse is about how the mom realizes she needs to spend more time with her kids and then immediately after she Alice, Alice, you're not wrong about it. It like the mom showing everybody in the episode that she needs to spend more time with the kid because she's missing out on everything in her kid's life. But then, after Jesse got the role, it turned out she sent them to summer camp, and now you spend less time with them like you would normally do. So, what would y'all put that in there? Sends them away to summer camp. <laughs> Just like, four kids? Not enough wine in the world, am I right? <laughs> so Emma's here to be a camp counselor, Ravi is here as a counselor in training, and Zuri's just here for camp, right? But Luke is just too busy being in his own Disney XD show. Just leaving your family behind? I see how it is. Hazel! The great part about it. Well, I I didn't say it was bad, but it was banger. When we were 16, your dad was a stone cold fox. <sighs> what if, what if, uh, what if you never did that again? So we come to find out that Gladys over here, who's like in charge of the camp or whatever, she used to have a huge crush on their dad, who's totally definitely coming back from getting those cigarettes any day now, okay? And she hates their mom for stealing him away or whatever. My aunt's always talking about your mom. <laughs> she hates her. <laughs> With every bone in my body, including my artificial hip. I loved your father, but your mom stole him from me. Plus the title of best counselor and any chance I ever had at having a happy life. Now this whole thing is kind of foreshadowing for later when Emma runs into this guy, Xander. <laughs> like, of course his name is Xander. Why wouldn't it be? <gasps> Whoa! Soup's cute guy is here, and you live with mud dabs? <laughs> yeah. Where did that wind come from? Oh, also, sorry, this girl here is Lou, who's in charge of tra training Emma on how to be a counselor, and she's also very normal. You sure? Welcome! I'm Lou, camp counselor and head woodchuck in charge. <laughs> I'd hug you back, but you just separated my shoulder. Oops, my bad. We'll make you a sling in arts and crafts. Oh, this this gonna be I, a great I can show. Tell. I can tell. Anyway, great. so the first episode of Bunked is mostly uh -huh. about this camp called Kikiwaka, not to be confused with Lake Titicaca, which is very fun to say. Lake Titty Lake Titty. Wait, wait, no, no, he ain't say that. 
that that didn't just came out my mouth, right? I I I I I I I mean to say that. I... Kiki Waka. Kiki Waka. Okay, this is a cult. We pay homage to Kiki Waka, the giant ravenous demon beast who roams these woods. The Kiker Wackers, and then we also get to meet all the new characters like Ravi meets Zayn. The go. And also this kid, Jorge. I once had a 23 minute fart. That's why the aliens abducted me. I'm special. Let me guess, the aliens probed you? They just invited me for brunch. You're weird. And then there's Tiffany, Emma and Zuri's new bunkmate. Shh, I'm studying for the National Spelling Bee. If I don't win, my mom won't let me come home. You know, oh. this is all played out for laughs here on the show, but like the number of times Tiffany says this kind of stuff about her mom is like really disturbing. Tiffany, aren't you so scared of the Kiki Waka? Nope. Nothing scarier than my mom if I don't get an A. Because if we don't win Best Cabin, then I can win Best Camper. And if I don't win Best Camper, I won't get into Harvard, which means I won't get into Harvard Medical School, which will kill my mother. Yeah. Anyway, so, like I said, Xander yeah! and Xander <laughs> hit things off really that. well, but Gladys's niece Hazel wants Xander for herself. So, she sends a message to Emma pretending to be Xander, telling her to sneak out that night and meet him at the spot. Xander sent me a text on paper! I think that's called a note. He wants me to sneak out tonight and meet him at the spot! Ooh the spot is the place in the woods where the kids go to, you know. <laughs> Electrocuted? Mm. But when she and Zuri go there, they hear some strange noises that totally definitely must be one of them keeker whackers. Would you please go back to the cabin? Not happening. I don't know what's more toxic Tiffany's attitude wait, or what wait, I love in that wait, toilet. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Do you think it's the Kiki Walker? But then Xander hears about what happened and he goes to save them with some of the other kids and long story short, they all come together and scare the monster away. <laughs> the, the fat kid farted. <laughs> and then the episode ends with Xander singing the show's theme song with one single chord on his guitar. Because of course he plays the guitar. Heaven forbid we have a hot guy with literally any other hobby, you know? Why can't we have a guy who looks like this and then he's like, oh hey Emma, check out my Beyblades. Mm -hmm. So seven seasons later, nine years have passed, okay? And like I said, the entire cast ends up getting replaced by the end of season three. Everyone yeah, yeah, oh, I did. Season I just got replaced. Like Xander, um... I don't know, but... Some glad dog like most of them think it um replaced. All the cabins burned down, and the beginning of season three find out that Gladys ran away with the insurance money. So the kid's mom buys the camp so they can fix mm -hmm. it up however they want. And then at the end of season three, they sell it to this, Lou, and, and she the becomes the main character of the show. After the, the mom sells to Lou so, for a dollar. That's like the cheapest way to sell a cabin. Crazy. Seven, for a dog, seasons one through five are about Camp Kikiwaka, and then seasons six and seven are about Lou and a few other characters moving to Wyoming to start the Kikiwaka Ranch, which is another summer camp they set up for some reason. Which of course brings us to the final episode of Bunked. The last day of camp, can you smell it? The energy, the excitement. I'm also smelling a gas leak. No, we're pointing out new smells. Hey, how's wedding prep going, Parker? Oh, great. I paid the caterers extra. And Wait a minute. Isn't yeah. that the dude from Zombies? This is what you've been doing this whole time? Anyway, so then we get reunited with all the relatable teens from earlier seasons. Oh, well, how are things back at Maine? Are you all holding down the fort at Camp Kikiwaka? Mateo, why haven't you applied to be a counselor? You'd be so great at it. No offense, but middle management isn't my style. Real power is wielded in the shadows. <laughs> I'm too busy at MIT and- Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. What? Oh, hey guys, sorry, I'm just so busy being the relatable 14-year-old going to MIT. <laughs> you know how it is. I'm loving city life. I got a driver's license and I have something called uncontrollable road rage. You're, you're happy for like, that? You know, no- Who can- who, who can decide for road rage? Who can decide to go on the road, what's her ass, and maybe give you a- Maybe go to hospital. Maybe go to rest. Maybe I don't know. 
offense to the original cast, but like just watching the last episode here with no context, these kids are they way are. funnier than the Jesse kids. Anyway, so this episode is kind of a big reunion, apparently, for a bunch of kids who have no idea how to dress for summer camp. <laughs> like, like in the first episode, everyone looks like camp counselors, right? But then like now here we are at friggin' Paris Fashion Week. Why would you dress like this for summer camp, you know? <laughs> like, my dude, how have you not died from heat stroke yet? How you feeling about today, Parker? A little nervous. Don't worry, I'm tracking Victoria's phone. If she runs for the train station, I am on it. <laughs> no, I'm nervous because I have to ask Lou about opening Camp Skikiwaka year round. If she's on board, I won't be back next summer. So this guy, mm -hmm. Parker, is getting married to this girl, Victoria, and the whole camp is trying to come together for this wedding. Because, you know, there's nothing more romantic than some good old P and V, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, the big problem, though, as mm -hmm. we learned throughout the episode, is that after everyone leaves when summer ends, none of them are coming back. Like, these guys are already gone. They're just back for this episode. This guy gets a deal with a food company, and then this guy has his own dreams coming, Drew. You're not coming back either? Oh, I'm going to Juilliard Summer Theater Ooh. Program next year. I what the f***? What? Why? College is for smart kids. Then everyone's leaving and they're scared to tell Lou because, you know, she's been like a mother to them all these years. Hey, Lou. Uh, I need to talk to you about something important. Uh-oh, I was afraid this might happen. Look, cold feet on your wedding day is totally normal, but the fact that Victoria agreed to marry you in the first place is a miracle. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how absurdly normal Lou is now? Like, remember back... Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate clap up for Lou. In the first episode. Welcome! I'm Lou, camp counselor and head woodchuck in charge. <laughs> this is like the most insane personality glow up of all time. But anyway, so part of the episode is about everyone trying to tell Lou that they're not coming back next year. And then the rest of it is about like wedding preparations and all that. But I was going to ask but you all got Parker and Victoria for their wedding gift. We have to get them a gift? Duh. If you don't get them a wedding gift, you won't be invited on the honeymoon. You go on people's honeymoons? Yeah. It's super weird. <laughs> whoa, 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 you whoa. You don't go on nobody's honeymoon. Ah, that's the time when they get a little freaky, a little, ah, oh, nah, ew, nah, ew, 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 ew. Man, this one episode is already funnier than like all of Jesse combined. Anyway, so Lou is kind of upset about all this because everyone else gets to go to Ivy League schools and live their dreams and leave and whatever, but she's always just kind of stuck here running the camp all this time. Lou, is everything okay? Oh, yeah. I'm just headed up to the top of this mountain to scream into the void and see if the void screams back. You guys hitting the slopes? Everyone is leaving. Everyone always leaves. Campers grow up, counselors move on, and I'm the only one who stays. And then it's finally time for the wedding. There's like a baby cow there and a big dance number because of course there is. And Lou realizes that helping kids grow up is rewarding or something. When I came to camp, I was an intense, perfectionist, overly ambitious kid. And now I'm an intense, perfectionist, overly ambitious adult. And Lou, you and the camp gave me the confidence I needed to pursue my dreams. Even when it was hard, it's given me friendship that I know will keep supporting me, no matter what. And pretty much that's more or less the end of the show. And with this show ending, the final tie back to the golden age of Disney Channel has also been severed because Raven's Home ended last year and this show started with the Jesse kids and Debbie Ryan started on Sweet Life on Deck, which was a spinoff of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, which was right during the like mid-aughts high school musical golden era of Disney Channel. And now it's all over. So yeah, that's more or less a very truncated look at the longest running Disney Channel show of all time. <laughs> Thank you.